come to this uh, order of responsibility. Thank you, Mark. Members of the Commonwealth, have we got any declarations of interest? Um, yes. If I can just declare the uh, agenda item three, which is the Commonwealth Bank and the um, elected member of the Irish champion. So, which is quite a good one. Okay. Thank you. 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 Yeah. This is a regular call that I present to members uh, of the committee uh, containing information relating to the delivery of the internal service. This particular report covers the period 1st of September through to the 31st of October 2015. Concentrates on identifying items of note that have been escalated from the bi monthly reports you received from me. I perform a statement of the internal service and identify developments being taken for these services. Uh, it attends to specifically draws to section 2.2 of the report. On page 17 of the inclusive papers, where a number of items are uh, identified for your attention. 2.2a, a uh, piece of work undertaken by ourselves on the Care Act 2014. Uh, the purpose of the work was to uh, assess the, uh, the progress that's been made by the Council to uh, implement the Care Act 2014. The report acknowledges that a considerable amount of work has been undertaken to date and identifies a number of areas for further work to be undertaken by the Department moving forward. The opinion provided was of a moderate risk of the organisation. Uh, the Department has responded very positively to the board of work and is uh, in, in the process of implementing various actions to address this issue. Uh, further work is scheduled by ourselves for the uh, new year, so we've been coming back to you with a progress update and then providing you a the 2.2b uh, piece of work on the top on the sports and recreation and leisure centres. Uh, this was at the request of the uh, senior management team within the farms. And all it was undertaken to evaluate the efficiency and effectiveness of specifically income procedures in operation at the leisure centres. Identified a number of areas for improvements and assessed the risk presented to a but potentially made in nature on the basis of the issue presented. All the actions identified happened for the agreement with senior management. Work is put in the way to implement all the issues identified. And again, for the work will be scheduled, has been scheduled for the next quarter, uh, late January, to evaluate what progress has been made and the effectiveness of the actions that have been taken by senior managers. And again, I'll bring the report back to yourself on that progress. The 2.2c identified a piece of work that we're going to talk on foster care services. Um, the purpose of the audit group was to assess the control and operation of the key risk areas of this service, specifically aims to approve foster carers and the sharing of information between relevant parties. The audit did identify the significant actions to improve operations and strengthen those internal controls in place, mainly in relation to the information sharing and system access elements. Uh, again, management have, ex uh, have been extremely receptive to the report, identified that, that yes, there are issues that need to be addressed, and have started to implement those actions to address those issues. Follow up again is scheduled the next quarter to evaluate the progress has been made and assess the effectiveness of what actions are taken. If I could also draw your attention to section 2.3 of the report on page 19, where a table identifying information relating to those orders were recommended actions included or reports not yet currently being implemented as identified. The table is attached to the tenant one. Um, all the recommendations are currently rated as amber, uh, indicating the progress is being made to address issues within the agreed timescales. A number of those relate to orders undertaken within uh, ITS um, and were the subject of a separate report by the Chief Information Officer at the September meeting of this committee in the court. Um, Section 2.4, page 20, I identify information related to the performance of the internal order service. Um, and the section 2.5, page 20, I identify some of the continuing improvements that have been made to the delivery of the internal order service. Uh, members are asked to go to the board, but I'm more than happy to take any questions if you want to have a question for any specific questions. Thanks, Ron. Ron, any questions? Any questions? Do we have that uh, now?
Yes, uh, it's a full report and uh, uh, very informative. Um, but it's, it's informed me of some things I've never heard of in my gorgeous career, and I thought it would help you with my educational remarks or whatever. What is the liquid lock project? Is it something to do with the, the value of the beer that we drink?
income trends, patterns, and the like, to determine where there are shortfalls that perhaps shouldn't be there, or where there are sort of uh, where there are sort of uh, an issue relating to sort of reduced income over a period of time. Those reports <coughs> are being now analysed, like that. they are being sort of pulled over by senior managers more so than they have ever before. You know? And the work that we've undertaken is identifying within those systems areas where the procedures aren't perhaps as tight or as good as they needed to be, and some of that in relation to how those sort of uh, how the systems can be tightened up moving forward. Because clearly, you know, that there is an implication from the findings of this audit that we're not. We're not getting all of the income in that we should be getting in through these sort of legislators. It's an implication, but, but the suggestion to me is that if we aren't on top of how we go about sort of setting fees and charges and applying those sort of uh, processes systems consistently across all the legislators, there are potential opportunities to be presented in where the, the, the income will be sort of maximised in the way that we want it to be. Um, in terms of the, uh, I think you alluded to two uh, areas of operation where perhaps uh, income isn't as uh, significant as it should be because of people abusing the system, some members of the public potentially abusing the system and not paying for the services or what they're obtaining. Uh, that is something that, that is very much sort of, uh, was a subject of a previous piece of work which I came back to yourself with a report on. Uh, and a lot of actions that are being addressed as a result of that sort of piece of work. But again, I can provide you with, to come back track a little bit, and I can provide you with when I send out the final report late this week, I can maybe improve the findings from those pieces of work and attach them to the that report if that will help. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a very quick one, really. On page 20, 2, 4, a, you've got the performance indicators and the percentage of delivery of the audit plan, 12, 45, and actual 39. Do we need to worry about that? Are there any specific reasons for that, Mark, or is it something that uh, we've picked up on and are trying to sort of improve? Uh, we have had an issue with regards to a specialist um, auditor, an uh, ICT auditor, which I, I lost. She, uh, she sort of had that job. Where sort of again, we've gone to sort of past few years, we say. Uh, I did try and fill that vacancy and I struggled to do that. Um, I, I'm in a position where I'm carrying a vacancy, I'm plugging the gap at the moment, as you can see, we're sort of slightly better target. It's not causing me undue concern at the moment, but it is something that um, I'm in the process of addressing. And I hope that by like, sort of uh, uh, January, I have any person in the post and it's over to. It's not truly on Julie then. It's something that I need to keep a close watch on something here, but I say I have been done with sort of intimacy business and I hope that my sort of uh in January I'll have something in place so that will allow me to do that on my hands and the plan, so should be back. Um thanks Chair. Um on that same point actually with David Grayson, I thought you could point hit this out. Um two point four point eight, that same table, third point. The percentage of return time survey forms indicating satisfaction with the internal audit service. Um, and numbers of pretend individuals in brackets. So that I might think you've got 15 actual responses, and you're saying 99%, you can't have 99% of 15. Yes, it's, it's a bit of a way. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the way I've portrayed the information, perhaps. Like that. My target is that 90% of all of those sort of questionnaires in return will like, indicate any satisfaction with the service. What I'm saying is that 99% of, of all of those returns will like, indicated that satisfaction level. But you can't now we're actually having 15 returns for this particular period, that's all it is. Oh, for the particular period, so it's overall, so there's no, not all of the yeah. But I was asked a question in a previous meeting if I could indicate sort of how many return for we we get in the recent quarter or so. But if you can put that in the next table. I've tried yeah. to shoot all that in and probably is a little bit misleading to be on Maybe I need to sort of add an additional comment that explains that. You wouldn't mind that that way. Yeah. Not a problem, thank you. I appreciate it. Any more questions, sir? Can we agree the recommendation? Yeah. Okay. Item 4. Chair. If I could sort of introduce this report, I'd just sort of uh, provide you with a little bit of background, both sort of nationally and locally, for the presenter's sake. 
that was a significant risk to the UK, to this company, producing quite alarming rates. Uh, it is absolutely essential, therefore, that uh, to the financial well-being of anyone who makes it, it's got adequate decisions in place to effectively manage this potential risk. This report updates members on the activities of Wales Accounts of Fraud team with the sits within the Ten World Service. Uh, I'm fitted to the team, but actually it's a two member staff of the sort of the central members, so it's, it's a team, it's a small team. Um, this report effectively uh, provides uh, some update on the activities of that team, like I'm there for the previous 12 months to date. The remit of the team is to prepare relevant best practice policy and procedure, facilitate the public change by raising awareness of fraud risk across the organisation, proactively manage risk by undertaking targeted work in, in specific key areas, and to investigate any serious financial frauds that are committed against the council. Uh, section 4 of the report uh, um, identifies the various activities undertaken by the team during the year to combat fraud locally and includes details of a major counter fraud publicity campaign that was coordinated by us across the major region uh, only last week, uh, aimed to coincide with the International Fraud Awareness Week. Um, it's been, I would say, fairly successful today. We have had quite a number of phone calls, a number of uh, email contacts, a number of um, letters that have come in to ourselves alerting us to potential frauds that are out there. There are people asking questions about sort of, you know, uh, what constitutes different types of fraud against the council. Um, it's clearly a message that we want to promulgate, but I know we want people to be aware that sort of, you know, every penny lost to fraud is just something to gain any less that we spend on public services. So it is important. It's a message that we want to get out there soon, not just sort of employees, but to the general public. You might recall we ran a similar campaign this time last year, and that, uh, the staff in the internal issues is a more outward looking nature to try to educate the levels of problems. I will lay the point the details in the report, but I'm more than happy to take you on the question. Well, I just realised we've got about 
received these sort of uh, these, these phishing emails from Nigerian sources that were very malnutrition in terms of their approach. Uh, nowadays, yes, they are very sophisticated. Um, we did have an issue about 12 months back on that one of our, um, it was a care home that was targeted, so they, uh, and we had an email that came into our sort of central payment section, reporting to be from this sort of care home, uh, asking for future payments to be made to a different bank account because they changed their banking arrangements and look very uh, sophisticated, look, look very legitimate to them. Uh, we did full file that, we did manage to recover the money, so it's a case that we should sort of some of onto the police. But we still learned the lesson, the, the hard way, should we say, can be made in that uh, a lot of procedures were tightened up, a lot of training was provided to those sort of frontline members of staff who were dealing with these type of medicinal requests. And, uh, uh, and there are procedures in place now that are, I would think, as good as anything that's out there. But, uh, you can never say now, if I am, as we just discussed, you know, the, the sophistication of these things, like the music policing and providing the activity. But all we can do is try and keep on top of it, try and keep it up. Uh, aware of the rest of the, the changes that are taking place and I'm trying to continue to lead this up and spend the control that we have in place. It, it's a difficult task, but we do what we can to do. All I was flagging up here is this seems to be becoming more sophisticated and we can't get the capacity to That's absolutely that's the point. Yes. Just one point trying to be dead. Huh? Mm -hmm. Could I ask about this SIP for document? On uh, page 44, which is in our papers, or small six of our papers, in the section D, providing resources, this D3, this what we get there, page 44, the organisation grants counter fraud staff unhindered, that's my emphasis, unhindered access to its employees' information and other resources as required for investigation purposes. So, but, were in my uh, sketch of no one expects the Spanish Inquisition type approach. Um, is, how can you tell us that things are unhindered? Do or people like to come and do spot checks and come march in and say, this is what we're doing, we're here today, look at your books, you know, drop everything, turn and leave the computer in the desk, we're going to look at it. Sort of unhindered is what I understand to a people. Did I answer your own question? expect to have access to all of the development documentation and would expect to have access to relevant members of staff. I mean, if they say the situation very well, whereby there was a potential issue on the table of investigation needed to be conducted. Um, the constitution does clearly identify that, that we as a Nintendo or service provider um, have that kind of access and have that kind of unrestricted on the individual access to other people and uh, documentation. They have uh, also made some issue of all the other. Um, I think it's essential
between the Jordan North West and the North West. And it's not cost because of anything. Yeah. So when I was brought round to the way of thinking that it would be costing anything down the land, ultimately there may very well be some benefits that accrue from it, if nothing else would seem to be a sort of leader in terms of using automation and just so on. But they've been talking around on how much of it is not to worry. Hopefully, you wouldn't have other agencies and the police, for instance, as well, with their that family content, you know, iPads, etc. And then I think we've been sure that's some code show that's already been done. Um, the next, next question I was going to ask was um, what steps do we take to ensure that sort of fraud awareness is, um, is takes place at each step of the council? So, for instance, in financial services, each year we've got to take um, anti money laundering exams and tests, just basic things to demonstrate knowledge and awareness. Do we have any equivalents here? We have quite a number of training programs designed specifically to address it, which is an online facility like that, which all members of staff are mandated with some requirements to complete that alerts them to the type of risks that are out there, so they get what actions they need to take in response to it as the flagship internal policy procedures that they do in the members that have to be compliant with um, yourselves on their own little country or so there on the train. Is that is that annually required and do we know what the figures are of who's doing it? I do know what the figures are. I haven't got them with me. Um, I would say at last count it was in the region of between 60 and 70 percent of the way folks have completed that train might very well be higher than that now. And on the back end of the campaign, I would expect those numbers to increase. It is mandated for the Senate government, and so I expect it to be more than but it has been in the past. It has been sitting between 60 and 70 percent. Um, there are, I mean, I mean that, that's a sizable return, don't get me wrong.
Chair. Um, this is my regular report to, uh, to members, which uh, is aimed at giving members an understanding of the SLT and the most significant risks that the organisation faces, and also the progress that we're making in relation to some of the actions we're taking uh, regarding those. There are a couple of points I was going to specifically bring to your attention, if I may. Um, first, at paragraph uh, 234, um, the impact of the National Labour Rate has been looked at twice by the SLT uh, in, the, in the last two quarters. It's definitely recognised as a key pressure for adult social services and it remains a, a key risk within their directorate respect to staff. Um, but at a corporate level, I think they found that it was, you know, could be managed at um, that level. It wasn't significant enough in its own right uh, to feature as an addition to the corporate risk. Um, paragraph 235. It's, it doesn't happen very often, but uh, it, uh, I'm able to report that we've taken a uh, risk off the corporate risk register. Uh, that was the existing corporate risk that related to the uh, security and effect of the website. Obviously, with the launch of the, the new website, which I think has, has gone with relatively few um, uh, it was, um, it's, uh, it's been mitigated effectively in essence to the effect that we can remove that. Uh, so that will no longer uh, appear in future reports that we get. The other uh, issue I'd just like to talk about is um, Section 236. We are um, doing uh, a whole sort of refresh of the corporate risk register. Um, the world moves around us constantly, and also we have a, you know, the new world plan and the new delivery plan, which I think envisages a very different tactical approach to how we realise some of the outcomes. Um, I think those provide the impetus for us to take a long, hard look at what's on the register at the moment and make sure that the issues that we're focusing on continue to be the right ones. Um, that process has already started with a series of interviews with members of SLT. Uh, that will really be concluded by, I think, the 4th of December to feed into a wider session to be held in January. I'm happy to take any questions that members may have. Thanks, Well, there are several points in the column of what progress has there been. Here examples from the top of page six, top right hand corner, that's page 56 in um, that document. There's reference there to uh, business support team getting more investment in, so perhaps we could have some details of success. But further down that page, there's reference in the high risk area 12 about recruitment to provide additional project management capacity to CYPD and DAS. And then on page 57, page 7, there's a reference to key senior interviews being engaged on a temporary basis to support the council plan. And then on page 73 and 23, there's reference there to consultant employee performance to look at the delivery models. Now, Consultancy and consultancy fees and the cost of interims is something that uh, does cause me a lot of interest, but I'm wondering what more can be said about it in this forum about how it's stacking up and how long these people are with us, what the end result should be from this where. Um, and I'm <coughs> glad yourself or Tom Salt might want to have a comment. First question you asked about economic investment strategy in terms of what we generated. That's the work of David Ball, Alan Evans, and the investment team to draw down government funds, which is the regional growth fund, which is a grant fund of the G, which supports public and private sector investments. So the council puts in so much to the regional growth fund, it draws in so much to private sector investment. That's where those figures have come from. A lot of it in the past 12 months has been around the wind sector, offshore wind sector industries, so it's based around the head area. So I'm quite happy if you want these other interviews and support that is available. In terms of interim support, uh, yes, some has been brought in to support the area of finance. We've brought in a strategic finance advisor to help us on the uh, three five-year financial strategy. That's That's a temporary support. As you be aware, we've got a director who's also vacancy and have some capital have now for the best part of 12 months. I'm covering that more with my job, so if you could take, we need some additional support to help us produce the five-year strategy. In terms of other areas, we've brought in additional support around the communication side. Paul uh, Maston has brought in for the people of four to five months and so forth to help us in that area to ensure the capacity. And in children's and adults, it's again that we've got into significant areas of transformation in those two directors. And again, we've felt that rather than bringing some new permits or taking something off their own duties, we're bringing some temporary support to help out. So in terms of that consultancy support, it's all temporary. Sort of short term to help us deliver the issues and the challenges we've got to face going to.
to establish the balance between uh, discreetly paying the market rate, which somebody can ask for short-term services that seems a high cost, as to recruiting somebody with the skills of having a parent post. And a simple glance at it suggests that the high short-term market rate cost is an arm and a leg. We need to weigh up the question of the arm and the leg against what seems a more reasonable salary for somebody in post. Perhaps you can help us on that one. In terms of balance is set, you look at the skills you can buy in. Uh, in terms of the market rate, the way these individuals are appointed is to go into a recruiters agency who provide a list of individuals who are then interviewed on the best person or the most appropriate person selected for the role. So it's not the individuals who set it, it comes to the recruiters agency. And the balance is taken as to whether the short term bringing in somebody for four to five months at the cost of whatever, it could be 30 to 40 pounds as opposed to paying for somebody permanently, it could take you three to four months to recruit. If you need just your term differences now, having to wait three to four months could delay the course of the project to bring it And once you've paid them full time, you've got that permanent employee, so you've got the cost permanently as opposed to just short term Thank you. Any questions? Again, this is another regular report that I'll bring to you on developments in relation to the risk management framework itself and also the area of insurance and um, Again, there are a couple of points that I'd like to specifically bring to your attention. Um, paragraph 222. Two, two. Um, this is a piece of work that I have wanted to, uh, to conduct for quite some time, um, which is to get the leadership of the political and executive to look at our appetite for the risks because we have an ambitious growth plan, we have an ambitious delivery plan. None of that can be without risk. And we need to understand how far uh, we are willing and able to go uh, to deliver uh, to for this. Um, that there is a defined process for that, and we're starting with an online survey um, of uh, the strategic leadership team and cabinet, which will probably start at the end of this month and probably will open into uh, the middle part. That will be a basic data gathering exercise, which will then inform a uh, research discussion, which will then allow to hold them at the early end towards the end of January uh, next year. Um, I'd also like to um, just sort of touch briefly on the uh, potential partnership opportunity which we looked at with uh, Warrington uh, Borough Council. Um, we do constantly look out for opportunities for working with, uh, with, with others. Um, this came through a uh, sort of discussion board in the Northwest. Um, we expressed an interest um, and we went to speak to our counterparts in, in, in Warrington. Um, on speaking to them, I think we realised that they had a strategic approach um, and also some of their operational demands uh, would make it very difficult for us to kind of service both that as well as making sure that we deal effectively with the primary role for, for this organisation. Um, so unfortunately we've, we've had to sort of uh, not progress that opportunity, but we are actively looking for others. And we believe that there are better opportunities with some of our more immediate things in the Northern City region. And obviously as they come up, we'll have a little examples. this. Um, and finally, the, um, the risk management benchmarking, this is something we did um, at 226, sorry. We, we did that last year um, and we are uh, into the exercise again this year. It is good to see um, progress in the report that we've had back from CIPRA and ALARM. Plus, as I've set out, there are still areas that we do need to improve on and I've come up with some uh, actions which will be taken through the Corporate Governance Group initially uh, next week uh, with a view to building those into the risk management action plan for 2016. Just very briefly, an associated problem, we've been looking at the risk of flooding and the way it affects places like West Kirk. I'm not sure there's a couple under this section, but can you give us any, uh, any update if you like on where we're up to with that? Uh, yeah, by all means, it is, um, as you might expect, it is on the corporate register. Um, if we look towards the, the end of the appendix, it would be at page 75 of your, um, of your result pack. Um, we have latest updates 
as to where we are with these other severe weather plans. I had actually marked my own coverage of the last section. And so hopefully that, that sort of gives you a good snapshot of where we are at the moment. Uh, again, if you'd like more information, I can get that from colleagues. It's really a question of time scale. When you think we're likely to get something designated in place, the people asking me a question of the opposite. Um, I don't think I have that level of detail to hand, but I'd be very happy to get that for you and give that back to you. Great. Thank you. I'll happily do that. We've got another meeting coming up on that. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Any more questions? Can we uh, agree the recommendation? Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, agenda item number seven. Tom? Thank you. Uh, thank you. 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 Essentially, this is the contact procedure rules being updated. Every two years, we take the time out and view our rules and see, uh, see what's happened in the interim. Uh, as I say, this is the time to review. The came to be actually implemented in December 2013. So it's time, it's time to review. Uh, section 2.3 sets out the revision based on the following principles. I said it's two years into review. It picks up the changes to the procurement regulations changed in 2015, so it picks up those. Obviously, the Transparency Code came in 2014, so it reflects the legislative change. Members like to call the one the last series in back in 2013, at the time we embarked on a potential shared service with Cheshire West and Cheshire Council. So at the time, we were looking to if we could link any of our processes and procedures with theirs. So at that stage, we took on board the Cheshire West and Cheshire contact procedure rules, adapted them to fit our purposes. So the main one, so if the two authorities did go down the joint route, we'd have a set of contact procedures that would fit the purpose. Since then, obviously, the shared service did proceed. So we're left now with the rules that Cheshire West had, I to say, are they really fit the purpose for women going forward? So taking account of the